Hello everybody. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve a question um, simply in the previous uh, practice problem I was looking at the side of it. Now I'm going to look at the bottom of it. I have like a liquid container over here and you can see I have water up here and down here I have the glycerin. Specific gravity of the glycerin is supplied to you, right? And the necessary dimensions is given to you as well. And the question is what is the force on the bottom of this um, liquid container? I would like you to pause the video and solve it yourself. Why? Because I believe you will be making a mistake and selecting this as the answer. Not for every single one of you, but some percentage of you. That's what I observe in my class setting when I ask these type of questions in the exam, right? You know, what a mistake approach would be to, um, well, we said that this will be the weight, the force on here will be the weight of the liquid on top of this all the way to the free surface, right? So you look at it, okay, this is glycerin. Yeah, we're on the same page, no question there. And then you look at the water, you add it up, and then you'll get this, okay? So that's not right. Why? Because there was an asterisk uh, right next to where we set the weight of the fluid above it all the way to the free surface. We said that the surface can be real or imaginary. And that is the hint there, okay? In this particular case, what I have to do is I have to pretend that this section is also water, okay? Because if you look at this section, the above, it, the free surface is right up there, okay? And I have some questions more, I mean, actually, let's be honest, much harder question in my uh, lecture video, much more complicated than this, that explain this in more detail, okay? But I'm gonna, as this is an FE practice exam, I am uh, just uh, going on the easy round of the spectrum here. And what I'm gonna do after this is also, I'm gonna prove you that what I just said is correct by doing another approach. All right, so what I have to do is I have to obtain the weight of the fluids and I'll, I'll, I'll do this like this weight 1 plus weight 2 let's call this 1, let's call this 2, right? Um, this weight 1 um, let's put over here this weight is mg, right? we know this from salt mechanics but we do prefer to write this slightly different, right? rho times volume definition of mass times g and the multiplication of these two is the specific weight, right? So we get ourselves specific weight times volume. And this is supplied to you in your FE reference manual as well, this formula that I'm writing here. Okay, so the first one will be the specific weight of water, 9810. And this is exactly given to you in the examination to you, okay? In the reference manual. So this height is 3, 2 plus 1, 3. And the width is 6. And into the page is 2. So it's going to be 6 is wet, height is 3, into the page is 2. So that is weight 1. Then the, the summation of the second one, note that I didn't even use. So if this was 6 degree, the answer would be the same. Okay. Plus the second one up there, glycerin. Um, remembering that this is also given in your uh, FE um, reference manual. Okay. So I'm going to use that. So this is 9810. 9810 times SG is 1.25 for glycerin given to me. In actual dimensions, I gave the same. 6 is the width, 3 is the height, 2 is into the page. And you can see over here that I get what? 6, 3, 18, 36. 36 uh, times, right? It's pretty common. 9810 is common, right? So that's going to be what? 1 plus 1.25, right? I'm going to get myself over here that 36 times 2.25 times 9810. And if I plug this into my equation, I will get myself 794,610 newtons as the answer. Okay. If I go up, you'll see that the closest one that I'm given to me is this will be the answer, right? Now, at the beginning of this question, I said that, hey, I'm going to show you uh, that this is really the answer, not the other one, right? Um, well, let's, let's do it. Let's write in red font over there. So the approach will be this. So force, we know this from high school. Force is equal to average pressure times the area, okay? So I'm going to calculate the pressure over here. The good thing is whether I'm over here or whether I'm over here, the pressure is constant. Do you remember that? If I'm going this way or in or out of the screen, the pressure is constant. It's only a function of going up and down, right? 
So for that reason, the average pressure will be whatever the pressure is here. So that's good. So let's put it point, uh, let's say A, and let's put it point B over here. And I'm going to use the gauge pressure, and let's see what happens. So PB will be equal to rho GH plus zero, right? Because, the, you know, gauge. Um, so obviously, what I'm assuming, just to note here is, as well, I'm assuming that over here is also atmospheric pressure is pushing everywhere, right? That's why it cancels, so it shouldn't matter. So rho GH and rho of water, okay, so that is given to me. So that will be um, 1000, 9.81 times H, H is 3. And then PA will be equal to PB plus, let me write it, I'll show you, rho G H2. What I'm saying is, Hey, I got my pressure here, B. I'm going to go one more step to get to A, right? Then P, PB is given to me here. 9,810 times 3 plus 9,810 rho G times the specific gravity of the second fluid, which is the glycerin, times the H2 is the same 3 as well. And when I do this, um, I calculated in the Calculator, so you're going to get 66,217, what's in it? Pascals, right? That is my pressure over here. As I said, the pressure and force relationship is fairly uh, manageable. Times the A, basically this is P average. So that's going to be 66,217 times the area. 6 is the width, 2 is into the page. And when I multiply this, when I, again, when I, mul when I multiply this, I'm going to get 794,610, exactly the same, right? So you can see that uh, the approach to take here is you need to go all the way, including over here, okay? If you're confused about it, I said this in my, uh, you know, classes as well, but just use the approach that I said, just second approach. Just get the pressure, average pressure here, multiply by the area. Thank you for watching this video.